Hey everyone, this is Alex USA Days and we're continuing the REST API testing with Postman. So we're in module two and today we're going to talk about what is REST API. So REST or RESTful stands for Representational State Transfer. It is a software architectural style used to guide development of web APIs. REST defines a way for clients and servers to communicate using standard HTTP methods such as GET, POST, PUT, DELETE, and PATCH. It is based on stateless communication, meaning that each request from a client to a server must contain all the information needed to understand and process the request without relying on stored information on the server. RESTful services are organized around resources, which are pieces of data that the API manages. These resources are accessed using unique URLs called URIs, Uniform Resource Identifiers. I remember the Who Am I call from the previous video. Request URL was https://developer.mozilla.org. API v1 Who Am I is the actual resource. RESTful API have a URL like Who Am I to manage or access data. Clients can interact with these resources by sending HTTP requests using methods like GET to retrieve data, POST to create new data, PUT to update data, and DELETE to remove data. This setup allows clients to perform basic operations on the data through simple web requests. REST principles. Uniform interface. All API requests for the same resource should look the same. No matter where the request comes from, using consistent URIs and standard HTTP methods like GET, POST, PUT, and DELETE. Client-Server Decoupling The client and server are independent. The client only needs to know the resource's URI, while the server handles data processing. They don't interfere with each other's functions. Statelessness Each request from the client must contain all the information needed for processing. The server doesn't store any client-specific data between requests. Cacheability. Resources should be cacheable to improve performance. Server responses should include information on whether caching is allowed. Layered system. Communication between the client and the server may go through multiple layers, like proxies or load balancers, but neither side should be aware of or affected by these layers. And then code on demand, and this is optional. All the rest typically deals with static resources. In some cases, it can include executable code like JavaScript in the response, which the client can run if needed. So what are the benefits of REST? First is simplicity. Easy to use with standard HTTP methods. Stateless design simplifies server-side implementation. Scalability. Statelessness allows handling more requests in parallel, supporting independent updates on client and server. Flexibility. Supports various data formats, like JSON, XML, and can be accessed from different platforms. Wide adoption. A widely supported standard, compatible with modern web technologies and accessible by any HTTP client. Interoperability. Works seamlessly across systems using HTTP, enabling interaction without custom connectors. And maintainability. Clear structure and separation into distinct sections, each responsible for a specific functionality, make APIs easier to maintain and update without breaking existing clients. So let's take another look at our MDN uh, web docs with JSON page. And let's take a look at who am I request and responded being sent. Now, can we determine if this is a REST API. Now we can't know for sure because we don't have all the documentation, but let's just look at what we have and kind of compare with the guiding principles for REST. So one of them is the uniform interface, right? So the API should use standard HTTP methods like get, post, put, and delete, and be accessible via unique URI. Um, so in our case, we are using get, and uh, this is the unique uh, you are right that is being provided uh, where the client can reach to get the response from. So that looks good. The second one is statelessness. So each request should be independent and self-contained, meaning it doesn't rely on previous requests to maintain state on the server. So I can reload as many times as I need. And every time I'll send the request as is, I will get the response from the server, 
right? Based on the request that is being sent. Uh, has to be resource based. That's the thir third one. The API should focus on resources, which in this case would be represented by the endpoint. So the endpoint on this API to get this particular response is the who am I? This is the, at the end of the URI, you have the endpoint, right? Who am I um, represents the endpoint. Now it also has to be uh, representation oriented. So the API should return resources um, that represent uh, represent in a typical format like JSON or XML. So if we take a look at the response, we do have a JSON body coming back. Like all the data is contained here. We we know everything that to get based on this response. It's contained in this uh, response that we get from the server. Now, not of the information, not all of the information is being updated, and uh, we don't have everything in our request. Uh, we don't have a user, we're not logged in, but we still send all the information, all the information comes back from the response, and what is available is updated here. So we know that the country is the United States, and we have the country ISO, even though all other values are set to null because there's no data for them, right? And then it has to be layered system. So the client should not assume that it's directly connected to the server, allowing for intermediate layer. So I can uh, mimic a response. I can have proxy in between. We can use Postman, and we will be working with Postman. You you, you can see that when you use REST, uh, you can send requests and responses. Uh, you can have mocks, and the REST communication is still going to happen, right? The server, the client, might not even know the proxies in between them. As long of as long as all the rules are there and everything is uh, formatted as expected and received back as expected, you will see the response is being properly handled, right? Even though there might be some things in between the server and the client. So that is pretty convincing that it is REST. And as we go and practice it, you'll see more and more how, you know, how to test it, how to um, send requests, get the responses, and how to verify everything uh, by data type coming back or line by line, but actual content of the response, okay? So this was Alex, you say days. Hopefully this was helpful. Uh, thank you very much and bye-bye.